This outdoor circuit board of a mini split air conditioner has arrived to me for repair, which is from the Gree company for two ton unit. The indoor unit of this air conditioner was showing an E6 error code. So let me tell you if the two different brands of air conditioners have the same circuit board in them, whether it is possible that both those identical circuit boards could be used with one another. But for that, you will have to check some things in both of the circuit boards. And then, you will be confirmed that this circuit board could be installed in the other brand of air conditioner with the same circuit board. Here locally, some of my friends, due to a minor difference in the circuit board, could not recognize them. For example, these capacitors on the other circuit board are designed somewhere else, like if they are mounted over here in the design of that circuit, or are mounted over here. They could not judge whether these two identical circuit boards are the same or different. So, I will tell you how to recognize them through a code written on these circuit boards. This is another identical circuit board. Now, I will tell you what the difference is between both of these circuit boards. I will tell you whether both these circuit boards are the same or not. This circuit and this second circuit board are both the same but with minor differences. Now, this is what the Gree company did on their circuit board while manufacturing. This IC is mounted here. But over here, no IC is installed, as it is empty, only the IC traces can be seen. And over here this IC is mounted, which has been soldered permanently with the pads of the through holes. This circuit board is used by Mydea company, and this one is used by Gree company. The circuit board used by the Mydea company has a difference, that they didn't solder this IC directly with the pads. Instead, they installed a socket and then mounted the IC above it. Another socket is also installed with it. This other IC over here is also not soldered with the circuit board. A socket is also installed beneath this IC. Now, whether the company intentionally does it, or is it done by the PCB manufacturers? I don't know about that. Now, how will we know whether both these circuit boards are the same with the same program? I saw some of my local technicians. They were not able to recognize and they asked me again and again how we would identify whether these identical circuit boards of different brands are the same or not. So, I thought I would share this information with my viewers as well. See a code is written on this circuit board. This code written here is quite long. If the design of the circuit board is different but they are still identical, this code will tell us that both the circuit boards are the same. So read this number and let me show you the number on the other circuit board. This number on the other circuit board is the same. There's no difference between a single word and a number. Yes, if there was any difference in one of the numbers, then I could have said both these circuit boards were different, and the program in this circuit board would be different. But both these circuit boards right now have the same numbers. So I will test and repair this circuit board. The first test of the circuit board will be the physical test. If you have ever repaired a circuit board, do comment on your experience below. See this capacitor has badly blown up. This is why this circuit board was showing an E6 error code on the display. This circuit board is displaying a P4 error code on the display of its air conditioner. What else is physically damaged in this circuit board that is visible? Let me show you. This IC over here is overheated. This is a 15 volt voltage regulator. Let me show you the number of this voltage regulator. This is 7815 CT. And if you know how to repair and work with electronics, you would know that 15 volts are very important for the circuit board. If the IPM for the DC blower motor had been installed in the circuit board, 15 volts would have been needed for it then. The 15 volts in the mini split air conditioner circuit boards are used to control the IPM. Also, for starting the IPM, if 15 volts are not passing, then the circuit board will not work. You can see that I have removed the heat sink from the circuit board. First of all, I will remove this capacitor from the circuit board. If I don't remove it and test the rest of the circuit board, then those good components in the circuit board could show a short circuit, and we will not be able to understand properly. As you can see, I have removed the blown capacitor from the circuit board, and let's see if there is any other problem with the circuit board or not. I will test that with the multimeter. These other two capacitors seem okay to me. I will test its IPM and the rest of these components, and then I will power it with electricity. This IPM is of a different type. Let me show you this IPM by taking the camera a little closer. This is the IPM in this circuit board, which is very different from those I usually work on. This first pin on the right is the positive pin of this IPM. The second is the W pin. The fourth pin is V. The seventh pin is U. On the other IPM, you usually see three pins on the corner. These are those pin here, these three pins. These are the negative pins in this IPM. The position of the pins in this IPM are different. The testing of this IPM will be the same. The IC are installed in pairs on the low side of this IPM. This is the first complete pair, this is the second pair, 
and this is the third pair. This is how this IPM is built. I will attach the multimeter's positive pin with the positive and negative pin with the negative on the IPM to test it. It is showing some value, but this value will be finished. This pin is absolutely fine. Now, let's move forward to the next components. I have already tested these IPM pins, and they are fine. Other than this I have tested the rectifier of this circuit board. It also has no issue. So what thing do we need to check in the circuit board? As I told you, this area of the circuit board has overheated, and the color from here has changed. I told you that a 15 volt voltage regulator is installed here. So, the turn is to test this voltage regulator. If it is faulty, the complete circuit board will not work. And if it is fine, then I will check something else in the circuit board. So, I am going to test the voltage regulator. I will attach the probes of the multimeter with any two pins of the voltage regulator. The multimeter shows zero reading, as the multimeter should not show zero reading. Zero reading is again shown with the next pin. On changing the probe side, it shows a voltage drop of 0.076, which is too little, considered almost zero. Also, zero on the second pin. The voltage regulator in this circuit board is short-circuited. A 5-volt voltage regulator is mounted next to the 15-volt regulator. Let's check it as well. It seems to be having an issue. But I will desolder the 15 volt voltage regulator from the circuit board. Then we will know for sure because they are joined together. This regulator is also showing the same readings. Let's change this 15 volt regulator first. Then we will work on the 5 volt regulator if the problem still occurs. I have tested this circuit board. And I have worked on this circuit board off the camera. I have found the problem here. The problem is that when I removed the voltage regulator from the circuit board, and when I checked the 5 volt regulator, it is still showing the same readings, meaning it is also faulty. All the smaller components on the low side worked through the 5 volt regulator, and when the 5 volt regulator is bad, my doubt was correct that they had damaged the microcontrollers installed on this circuit board. I have tested the rest of the components, and I found no issue. However, the main component in the circuit board is the MCU. The voltage regulator has damaged the microcontroller. So let me explain to you, going further in the video, why they damaged the MCU. This is the microcontroller. It has been blown up. I saw this under the microscope. This circuit has two microcontrollers. The MCU on the right is the main. The MCU on the left is used to operate the IPM. Both these MCU were communicating with one another. And both of them went faulty. This means this circuit is dead. It could not be repaired. Because I don't have these microcontrollers in their program. Let me tell you why this circuit got damaged like this. If the electrical polarity of the circuit board is correct then there is a higher chance that the circuit board may be damaged from the high side. And if the circuit is damaged from the high side, the chances of repairing it are 100%. When the polarity of the circuit board is in reverse, it means that the line is given to the neutral wire, and the neutral is given to the line wire. Only then such a malfunction in the circuit board is made, and that error blows up the microcontroller. Because the polarity change makes all the components work very hard. So always make sure to install the circuit board wires with the correct polarity in the electric socket to prevent such damage to your circuit boards. I am tired now, and I run on coffee, so buy it for me on Patreon. Click the link on the screen to visit. Click on the left or right thumbnail to watch our next videos. And subscribe. Thank you.